Hi everyone, my name is Kaylin. Welcome to this exciting astrological event that I'm going to be covering in explicit detail. I will be using tropical astrology, otherwise known as Western astrology, and I'm going to be covering the Uranus North Node and Mars conjunction, which will be occurring on the 31st of July in 2022. Today, as I'm filming, it's the 24th of June in Melbourne, Australia. I just wanted to add that because I'm sure people will be watching this over the next few weeks and hopefully months, and maybe people will even revisit this video in a few years' time. So Uranus and North Node only form a conjunction once every 15 years approximately. Now, the conjunction will take place at 18 degrees in the sign of Taurus and Mars will be at 17 degrees. So I will be analyzing the influence of Mars in this conjunction, given that it is so close to Uranus and the North Node. We won't have another conjunction between Uranus and the North Node until the year 2357. So this is a once in a lifetime event, that's for sure. Before I get into how this conjunction can play out in terms of world predictions, I want to go through what Uranus represents, what the North Node represents, what Mars represents in astrology, and um, I'll also be covering what Taurus rules over. I know, you know, the, the basics are there. Everyone knows Taurus rules over finances and art, but there are a few other things as well. Okay, so let's let's have a look at Taurus first. The sign of Taurus rules over money, finances, banks. It also rules over bovine creatures. So I would say that livestock is going to feature very heavily in terms of what unfolds over the next 15 years. Also, in terms of this conjunction and the time frame, we're going to see a series of events taking place around the end of July or in August. Let's just say plus or minus one month. So we'll look at what could potentially happen in July and what could potentially happen in August. But this is going to be setting the stage for the next 15 years. So this is a new 15-year cycle that is starting. So we're really going to be warming up to experience these events over the next 15 years. So as I mentioned, we've got Taurus ruling over money, finances, and the banks, okay? So financial systems, um, Uranus in Taurus definitely adds the whole element of cryptocurrencies and, you know, trying to move in the direction of a cashless society, potentially. Now, Taurus rules over nature, okay? All of nature and the natural world, Taurus is associated with resources, and by that I mean resources that occur above land. So think of forests, um, food in terms of fruits, vegetables, uh, agriculture, farmlands, crops, anything and everything to do with farming as well. And it also rules over shopping. Now, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Taurus rules over the arts. So think of Venusian things like art in terms of drawing, painting, how we do art. Um, digital art is definitely going to take off in a very big way, more than it has so already. And Taurus is also connected to music. So is Neptune and the sign of Pisces, but I just wanted to throw it in there. Now, I'm also going to be focusing on the sign of Virgo, and that is because the 18th degree in astrology is the Virgo degree. And um, 
with the Virgo degree, this is connected to loans, debts, the medical industry, small animals, so domestic animals, and like I said, Taurus rules over the natural world, and Uranus actually rules over large animals. I just want to mention that before I forget. And um, with the Virgo degree, there's going to be a big focus on health, nutrition, diet, and our diet when it comes to um, meat because Taurus rules over bovine creatures. Obviously, there's a big push for um, artificial meat being a thing, which we've already started to see in the media. Thanks, Bill Gates. Now, the Virgo degree is also connected to work. So offices, office space, litigation, legal proceedings to an extent, and um, also service and labor. So another um, another thing that the Virgo degree would be associated with would be unemployment, anyone who has a disability, minorities, and also sicknesses and illnesses. Obviously, Neptune is also connected to you know, disease and illness, but Virgo and Pisces are two sides of the same coin. Now, as far as Uranus is concerned, Uranus is associated with large groups and communities, riots, rebellions, um, things that are shocking, also innovation, inventions, um, air travel to an extent, obviously Sagittarius is connected, well, it's not obvious, but Sagittarius is also connected to planes and air travel, but, you know, Uranus Uranus has a, a big um, stake in this claim as well. Now, Uranus is associated with apartment buildings because lots of people live in apartments, high-rise buildings just in general, and uh, as I mentioned before, large animals, so um, wild animals, wild beasts, you might say. Uranus also rules over criminals. Yes, we've got Scorpio and Mars to an extent ruling over criminal activity as well. But, you know, I just wanted to mention that Uranus is also connected to criminal activity. And um, Uranus rules over natural disasters and complex interconnected systems, technology, um, social media to an extent. So with social media, we'd be looking at Mercury, Uranus, and the sign of Aquarius. And of course, Uranus is connected to science and scientific advancements and new innovations and inventions. So there'll be a big focus on AI, which is artificial intelligence, um, VR technology as well and um, robots, and let's just see. I mean, there's lots of things that Uranus rules over. I'm just painting a picture so that you guys and uh, you guys can get the feel for what is going to be, I guess, flavoring this new cycle that we are going to be experiencing. Now, the North Node differs from the Vedic perspective versus the Western perspective in astrology, okay? So in Western astrology, the North Node does have this sort of like sunshine and rainbows vibe where it's like, this is our destiny. You know, th this is what we're meant to be heading towards and, you know, we need to push in this direction. But Vedic astrology says the North Node is associated with scandal, scandals, experimentation to the point of, um, I guess, there being no limit. The North Node in Vedic astrology is associated with poisons and toxins and something which is artificial. So artificial in any sense, artificial meat is one way we can look at it, but then also um, artificial enhancements and Taurus is the beauty industry. So I'm just, I actually didn't write this in my notes. I'm just making a mental note now. Um, 
people are going to start looking very different, more more so than they already are, because people will be experimenting with their physical appearance. Um, I probably don't even need to mention that again, but that's one way that we can see the next 15 years start to unfold. Now, the North Node is also associated with anything which is foreign, and this can be to the point of appropriation as well. So Mars in astrology has a similar energy to the North Node and to Uranus in that it is associated with experimentation, new innovation. Um, I forgot to mention the North Node is also associated with technology and it has a very um, sexual energy as well, as does Mars. So Mars is connected to sex in astrology and um, engineering as well mars rules over boundaries and marking one's territory mars is connected to um, wars the military and uh, needles weapons tools equipments penetration of any kind and of course mars is connected to sport and speed and um, as in things happening quickly and Mars, as I mentioned earlier, is at the seven is at seventeen degrees, which is the Leo degree in astrology. So there will be a big focus where Mars is concerned on sports, which is also connected to Leo energy. In terms of how this conjunction can play out, I mean, it'll affect the sporting world. It'll affect the financial world. It will affect banks, loans, debts, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin. I will be doing a seg- a little segment on Bitcoin and um, boundaries being erected, our access to certain things being erected. As I mentioned earlier, nature, the natural world, and the food industry. Actually, let's let's begin with nature, the natural world, and the food industry. This can indicate in the short term that around the 31st of July, plus or minus maybe even a month, we can see natural disasters taking place, unfortunately. So this could be earthquakes because Uranus rules over earthquakes specifically with the involvement of Mars here. This can lead to volcanic eruptions This could indicate there being um, some crazy dust storms, also hurricanes, cyclones, and tornadoes, and that is because Uranus rules over air and wind and Mars rules over speed. So we're looking at winds, you know, at crazy fast speeds. So obviously tornadoes, dust storms, etc. are indicated here. Now, Mars rules over fires, so we could be seeing wildfires take place and also because we have Uranus ruling over large animals, there could be a stampede that occurs. Now, in terms of where this would occur, I would be, I'm not going to list countries or cities per se, I'm just going to tell you what you can look out for. And that would be countries and cities that have a Taurus ascendant, sun or moon. So just as an example, you could Google um, Melbourne natal birth chart and it'll show you um, the, the ascendant, sun and moon and whatever, you know, the chart for a particular city and for a particular country. So you'd want to be looking at around... Um, 18 degrees Taurus or even just Taurus in general. Now, on a different note, with um, with Uranus ruling over liberation and freedom to an extent, this could see there being some sort of freak accident around the 31st of July where large animals could escape from an enclosure. So there could be some sort of Um, accident involving wild animals that occurs and um, like I said it could be to do with 
escaping from, you know, what wherever they've been held in captivity. And um, you may see on the news that there's some sort of like wild animal attack, which would be like a, a freak occurrence. Now, with how this affects the natural world, because there is this um, potential for natural disasters to take place and also unseasonable temperatures, you know, whether whether where you are is like randomly really, really cold on a certain day or there's a, sun, a sudden heat wave, you know, Uranus represents there being unpredictability in the weather system because it's Taurus. So these things could lead to an unfortunate accident that befalls forests, crops, farmlands, and livestock. So again, this could be like a wildfire or an earthquake or, you know, some sort of natural disaster. Now, yes, you know, on one hand, things could happen which are totally outside of our control. On a different level, this conjunction is going to make a square to Saturn in Aquarius at 22 degrees. So there could be other things at play which are deliberate because, um, it, you know, the square to Saturn represents that this could be orchestrated by governments or by large organizations. And of course, with all of this taking place, there can be a huge impact on the food industry. I know we're already seeing this already, but the cost of importing certain foods could skyrocket, especially if this is um, meat, anything which is food that occurs um, naturally, so vegetables and fruits, and even crops as well. You know, Virgo is associated with, with crops, and of course this is occurring at the Virgo degree. So there may be some sort of... Um, natural event or unnatural event which really drastically disrupts the food industry okay so with the north node entering the sign of Taurus now we can see um, that there is an experimentation with food because the north node can represent doing things that have never been done before so maybe we're now going to be eating foods that we've never eaten before, depending where you live in the world, or eating foods that have been genetically engineered or modified. Um, there's, like I mentioned earlier, a big push towards artificial meats, and this could be um, ushered in through these potential disasters that take place whether they're natural disasters, whether they're not, whether it's both, you know, I guess it will remain to be seen. And also because of this square to Saturn at 22 degrees in Aquarius and with Saturn ruling over governments and restrictions and limitations, this indicates that over the next 15 years, what we're eating and what we are permitted to eat may be controlled or limited to a certain extent. I don't want to freak you guys out, by the way. You know, these are just some potential realities that could take place. On a positive note, and still with respect to this conjunction, there could be some amazing new developments that take place with gardening and with there being a big focus on growing foods in your own private gardens or in your own um, neighborhoods and then circulating these, okay, so the exchange of certain foods or resources. And I'm saying this because Uranus rules over communities, Taurus is connected to foods, and this particular conjunction will actually be making a trine to Virgo, which will be at 12 degrees. And by that, I mean a trine to the moon in Virgo at 12 degrees. So this is a very helpful 
aspect that the conjunction is making. So this could see the everyday individual sharing their food with other people and sharing their resources with other people. And I'm saying this because in mundane astrology, which represents, um, which is connected to astrology for world predictions, the moon represents the everyday person, so everyday civilians. So I'm really happy to see that the moon is making a trine to this conjunction because this indicates that on a personal level and on an individual level, we will still be maintaining our, um, our desire to help our fellow humans, you know, our brothers, sisters, families with respect to finances and resources and money. Now let's let's talk about boundaries being set. So Mars rules over marking territories, exploring new territories, pioneering behavior, and um, Uranus in Taurus represents that as a community or as a society, there will be boundaries that are put into place or there will be attempts to put boundaries in place which impacts people's access to food and resources and money. So I just want to take it back in history for a moment. When we had the North Node and Uranus conjunction in the sign of Leo back in 1961, this is when the construction of the Berlin Wall began in Eastern Germany. So Mars is boundaries and walls and protection. Uranus is something that is high. So because we have the influence here of um Taurian like topics as well as Virgo topics with the Virgo degree, there will start to be boundaries which are implemented thanks to the square to Saturn in Aquarius when it comes to access to food, access to resources, access to banks, access to money, access to our personal finances because Taurus is our personal finances and also um, access to finances in the digital space because Uranus is in Taurus and Mars is at 15 degrees, which is a Leo degree, which means it is connected to stocks and speculative investments. Now, Taurus is one of the signs which is connected to property and real estate. The other sign would be cancer. So our access to property is something that could be, um, in, you know, we're starting to see like an imposition here um, from certain governments, you know, certain people being able to access certain property. And also Taurus rules over our resources, just generally speaking. All right. So um, on one hand, the government is trying, well, when I say government, it depends, you know, whether that's the government where you live, large organizations and corporations banding together. Obviously, uh, maybe it's not obvious, but there does seem to be a push towards a one world government. But even though boundaries may be um, erected, whether these are literal or figurative surrounding these topics, there's still hope there's still very positive aspects that this conjunction is making. And just to name a few, one on one hand, we have the trine to the moon in Virgo. On the other hand, we have a trine to Pluto in Capricorn. And also this conjunction will sextile Venus in Cancer and sextile Neptune in Pisces. So regardless of how many um, boundaries and rules and regulations are implemented, the moon in Virgo represents the everyday person, everyday society and the everyday civilian. There will still be ways around this. There will be people banding together to form communities and people will be more generous. People will be 
more concerned with showing um, charity and giving donations to those who are in need. I'm also mentioning this because of the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces. So it's like, you know, for those who are um, underprivileged or the people who are negatively impacted by this conjunction on a world level, there's still your everyday neighbor who wants to help you. There's still going to be access to other avenues of emotional support, financial support, um, support when it comes to your living circumstances. I think one of the most important things to consider here is that the ruler of this conjunction, which is in Taurus, is Venus. Venus will be in Cancer at 16 degrees, making a very close sextile to the conjunction. So no matter what happens over the next 15 years, with Venus also being so close to Sirius, which is the spiritual fixed star in astrology, this represents that for the everyday person, our values will still be grounded in spiritual um, values. Okay, so let's take a look at robotics and technology and social media. So with this particular conjunction making a tight T-square to Saturn at 22 degrees Aquarius and then Mercury at 23 degrees Leo, we're seeing a lot of... Um, Tense energy surrounding social media, surrounding um, how we communicate with one another, especially because Mercury rules over communications. Mercury in Leo represents our ability to express ourselves freely in terms of social media. And um, of course, we are seeing this enormous push towards uploading everything to uh, Facebook and the existing social media platforms, which have a very um, strong, I guess, grip on our society. I do think that we're going to start to see new social media platforms coming through simply because Uranus, Mars and the North Node together represent new innovations, new technology, and new inventions. So with Mars ruling over all of these things and with 18 degrees representing the Virgo, dis Virgo degree in astrology, there will be new advancements in medical equipment. This doesn't need to be negative. This is something which can have a very positive impact on humanity. So we may be able to cure um, illnesses and diseases that previously there have been no cure with or no cure for. And I'm saying this because uh, this conjunction is making a trine to the moon in Virgo at 12 degrees. So the moon in Virgo at 12 degrees covers, I mean, diseases, whether these are mental illnesses um, or you know, any kind of disease or ailment or illness. So I think that we really are going to see some new um, advancements in this department. There may be the discovery of, um, I don't want to necessarily say the discovery, but the let's say the introduction of certain herbs and um, plant medicine. So Taurus, of course, rules over plants. So this could be introduced into um, the mainstream medical industry. And, of course, this can represent there being alternative forms of healing which are being welcomed or being introduced and which over the next 15 years will be less, I guess, shocking or surprising. So there may be some um, really wild and out there suggestions when it comes to healing when it comes to the medical industry, but this could see there being um, 
a positive step in that direction. And of course, the Virgo degree is connected to animals, so domestic animals. So even from the point of view of vets or veterinarians, we can see there being new ways of healing animals, especially if there have been previously incurable diseases. And like I said earlier, Taurus rules the natural world in general. It doesn't just need to be um, domestic animals. This could be wild animals as well. This could also see us bringing back animals from extinction in a sort of black mirror twist. Maybe there's going to be some kind of experimentation on animals where, um, you know, scientists are breeding one animal with another, but this could be done in an artificial way. So in a lab, just for example, and yeah, you know, maybe we're going to see modification to uh, animal DNA in some way. Um, let's have a look. In terms of the sporting world with Mars ruling over sports and speed and Mars being at 17 degrees, which is the Leo degree, new records could be set and um, there could be um, new sports which are developed somehow which occur in the natural world if I'm just like playing with um with the terminology of what's happening around here um sorry now I'm just looking at my notes uh new advancements in the world of formula one okay so um in the Uranus and North Node conjunction which took place in 1961 in the sign of Leo the Formula One made the news. So we had uh, an accident occurring. So sporting accidents can certainly occur just by the way Uranus and Mars are the two planets which are associated with accidents. So um, there was a uh, crash in the Italian Grand Prix in September 1961, um, which saw um, the German driver unfortunately dying and 13 spectators were hit by his Ferrari. Um, but on a different level, the first ever American Formula One champion was seen in that same race. And there was another Formula One um, reference when I looked back at past events. It was the shortest, shortest, shortest race ever won and that was just 14 laps whereas normally they're 55 to 75 laps so I do think that in the world of Formula One there'll be some new advancements and probably even restrictions and limitations when it comes to modifying the vehicles or modifying the engines and I'm saying that because of the square to Saturn in Aquarius so maybe they're trying to um, make the world of Formula One fairer if you can't tell, I do have an interest in Formula One. Um, now, on a different level, I think that sporting games and matches and tournaments could be hosted in countries and places where they've never been hosted before. So for the first time ever, just remembering that Taurus rules over, um, you know, the natural world and property to an extent. Now, on a different level, Mars rules over engineering, all right? And we've got this combination of all three, Uranus, Mars, and the North Node, being connected to innovation, technology, and new inventions. So we could be seeing um, robots entering into, um, let's say, the world of labor, and the service industry. And I'm saying this because the 18th degree in astrology is Virgo. Virgo rules over labor and being of service. So um, I'm sure many of you saw the uh, Boston Dynamics dogs. You know, maybe we're going to be seeing um, robots joining the military, right? So Mars rules over the military and military forces. 
18 degrees in astrology, I believe, does have a place in representing wars. So um, new advancements when it comes to weapons that are being used in wars could be seen. Again, you know, I don't want to freak anyone out. I'm sure that um, there will be positive, the positive um, use of robots and AI in our world in one way or another. On a different level, in past North Node and Uranus conjunctions, there was a lot of, um, let's say, people being freed from prisons, being held captive, prisoners of war, um, people being allowed to return to a country that they've been exiled from. So, you know, I have looked at conjunctions for like the past 100 years and there seems to be this real focus on the court systems as well. And by that I mean politicians or people having a place either in court systems or in politics, which has never happened before. So let me just go through a couple of examples. In 1961, in August, at the end of August, um, we saw James Benton Parsons was confirmed to be the first African-American judge of a U.S. district court. Now, um, just a few days later, U.S. President JFK signed a law against hijacking, so the death penalty. So we've got some, um, we've got a lot of pushes for new, um, well, not new, but existing humanitarian issues because Uranus rules over humanitarian issues. In another Uranus North Node conjunction in 1976 in September, the New Zealand government established the country's first centralised electronic database and this raised questions about the state's ability to gather information on its citizens. So a lot of discussion is going to be had, especially in July and, and in August, surrounding the ability of governments to um, basically keep an eye on its citizens especially through the usage of social media. So Facebook is one of the most obvious examples. And um, just on a totally different note, with Uranus and Mars ruling over accidents, you know, in past conjunctions, we've seen airliners collide, planes coming down. Um, there was the Burnley Tunnel uh, catastrophe in Melbourne, Australia, uh, when we had one of these con one of these conjunctions, so big accidents can occur involving um, public transport. So, like I said, trains and planes, and um, I guess jets as well. Um, let's just have a look. Oh, okay. <laughs> this this is kind of funny to me. Um, let's talk about condoms for a second. In November in 1991, when we had the Uranus and North Node conjunction in the sign of Capricorn, the first TV for, um, sorry, the first ad for condoms was aired on Fox TV. And just a week later, it made the news that condoms were handed out to thousands of New York high school students. So Mars is, um, well, a phallic symbol. So Mars um uh, sorry sex <laughs> and the north node and mars they're all interconnected so maybe we're going to see some um some things in the media coming up around uh planned parenthood um also uh contraception is a big thing when we've had uranus and north node conjunctions in the past there's been um a lot of uh, news in the media about abortions so that will certainly be coming up again and also we will be seeing certain um, countries voting for independence so when we had the Uranus and North Node conjunction in the sign of Capricorn in 1991 the Ukraine voted uh, Ukrainian people voted for independence 
And um, there was also the independence of the Republic of Kazakhstan. So lots of news about independence, communism as well. Um, all of this stuff is going to be in the media and people's rights. You know, Uranus rules over human rights. So there will be a big discussion about human rights and also government. the government's um, I suppose you could say meddling in human rights. Now, let's take a look at Bitcoin and uh, cryptocurrencies. Okay, so Uranus in Taurus is very much connected to cryptocurrencies. It's part of our conversation in everyday life. So as far as Bitcoin is concerned specifically, the chart of Bitcoin, if you guys have ever looked it up, is going to be very impacted by this particular conjunction. So Bitcoin's part of fortune is at 17 degrees Taurus. Mars is going to be smack bang on that. Bitcoin's ascendant is 8 degrees. Leo and the sun is going to be almost exactly conjunct the ascendant. And um, unfortunately for Bitcoin, its Chiron is at 22 degrees Aquarius. So during the Uranus, North Node and Mars conjunction, Saturn is going to be right on top of Bitcoin's Chiron. So hear me out, guys. Do I think Bitcoin is going to survive? Yes, but not without heavy government control and intervention. That is what is coming through for even just the solar return chart of Bitcoin. Um, if you guys want me to make a separate video just on uh, a separate astrology video just on Bitcoin itself, let me know. And if enough of you want that, I will do a video about Bitcoin and when it's impacted in a positive way, negative way. Essentially, Bitcoin, in my opinion, does have a future. It will survive, but it will be tightly controlled and tightly regulated. In terms of finances and um, the world of, you know, banking and digital currencies, banks, in my opinion, are going to start creating their own coins. I really think this is what is coming through over the course of the next um, 15 years. And let me just put a, a potential theory out there. Maybe we're not going to have a one world currency. Maybe that's too hard basket. But what we will see is every bank, every major bank having its own coin, type of coin, crypto coin, that is, every country having its own um, coin. So then, you know, on one hand, we've got this like obsession and almost like this, um, you know, fanaticism with cryptocurrencies. You know, it's obviously a very exciting topic and that couldn't be controlled. It couldn't be suppressed. So just like the internet, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. And this is where um, governments are jumping on board the crypto gravy train. And on one hand, I don't think that Bitcoin will be eliminated or eradicated completely. It's just that there will be um, many more regulations that are coming through. And of course, this is somehow going to benefit certain governments that are a or, or bodies let's say maybe financial bodies that are able to exert their control over bitcoin and this will obviously benefit them so just as an aside why is bitcoin crashing so much right now i blame the mars and chiron conjunction and chiron in aries is hovering around bitcoin's midheaven Okay, so this is why Bitcoin has been suffering a lot. It's one of the one of the reasons. That's where I'll leave it at that for for Bitcoin. Okay, so like I talked about earlier with digital art taking off and maybe even the way that we make music, 
Obviously, there's a lot of um, technological programs that we can use to create art and to create music. There could even be like a new um, a new genre of music which is taking off and which unfolds over the next 15 years. Maybe there's going to be some new breakout artists that really rock the world. Any kind of um, music group, or sorry, let's let's say individual musician who has their midheaven at around 18 degrees Taurus, plus or minus, these individuals could be... Um, in the media, especially or in the news, especially around the end of July when we have this conjunction take place, there could be um, new methods when it comes to shopping because Taurus rules over shopping. So a new way in which we shop. Obviously, online shopping is already huge, but maybe um, over the next fifteen years your regular cashier or sales sales assistant is going to be um, completely eradicated. Maybe it will all be done through technology. Obviously, we're already seeing some amazing um, advancements in that department, such as, you know, at Uniqlo. I went to Uniqlo the other day and, yeah, no one served me. I just, like, dumped my purchases in, um, like, a little like a bucket thing and it just knew what I was buying and I just it was all done so um that was kind of crazy to me we can also see this taking place um just in the shopping world in general Taurus is connected to fashion so is Leo and again Mars is at 15 degrees so this is a Leo degree new fashions can take Fashion trends can take off. Uranus rules over trends. Um, So the way that fashion is um, developed, you know, maybe we're going to see a big push in um, digital printing for fashion. I just want to mention, um, mention why digital printing or even just printing in general has a place in this conversation uh, with this conjunction and that is because in the micro zodiac which is also called the dodecatomaria um i won't pronounce that in in greek but basically this is the idea that every degree so from zero degrees to 29 degrees every degree falls in it into a 2.5 degree bracket, which is ruled over by one of the 12 zodiac signs. Um, The 18th degree in Taurus falls within Sagittarius. So this is, this means that this conjunction will tie in the themes of Sagittarius, importing, exporting, um, printing, digital printing, because it's, because it's Uranus. And um, I also believe that Our access to history, just to take it in a different direction, our access to history is going to be infringed upon. And I'm saying this because the square to Saturn represents that history is is being rewritten. You know, there's appropriation going on with the North Node's involvement, um, deceit and lies, which is represented by the Vedic interpretation of the North Node. So there being some sort of restriction, as shown by Saturn, in our ability to access history, you know, this is showing up pretty clearly, especially because this conjunction is forming a tight T-square with Mercury in Leo, and Mercury is connected to books. The Sagittarius degree is connected to publishing and printing and the truth as well. So um, it's going to take a lot of discernment on our part as individuals to make sure that cultural practices are not being forgotten or outlawed or, um, or basically frowned upon under the guise of we are all one, we are all the same, yes, we're all humans, but eradicating culture and you know Taurus 
Taurus is connected to culture to an extent um, in terms of the 18th degree being a Sagittarius degree. This represents culture, languages, and so um, there is this big push to basically stifle culture. And I saw this interesting article the other day which spoke about minimalism which is basically eradicating design in everyday life. So um, just as an example, you know, phone booths aren't everywhere, red anymore. You know, they just look kind of bland. Bench seats look very um, new age and foreign instead of having this like Baroque style and detail. So yes, on one hand, digital art is going to take off and that's extremely exciting. But on the other hand, we can't forget these artisanal practices and we can't just put a stop to handcrafted things and handcrafted arts. So my suggestion to you guys, especially if you are in the art world, whether that's in um, music or whether that is in, you know, traditional art forms, sculpture, painting, um, drawing you know make sure that you continue to teach these art forms to your family to you know your pupils your students and let's try to see a continuation of culture with respect to the art world now let's just see if I have um, forgotten anything major all right the last thing I'm going to talk about and you know perhaps this is one of the most important areas digital passports okay obviously there's been a lot of talk about um digital passports even in you know the last few years leading up to this time i do think that that is what is going to be coming through over the next 15 years and essentially the reason i'm saying this is because this conjunction ties in so many other planets and so many other uh, so many different areas of life so you know most importantly we have resources okay our access to finances and food and the banking system and then it's at 18 degrees this is the medical industry so we're tying in our accessibility to Um, medical treatments, surgeries, because it's conjunct Mars, Mars rules over surgeries. And, you know, it's a square to Saturn. So this is like, you know, watching what you're spending money on in terms of shopping, which is Taurus, how you're spending money, which is Taurus, Um, how much you're earning from work, because it's the Virgo degree, which is work in Taurus, money. And also, Um, your actual history when it comes to health because it's at 18 degrees. So this is like, um, you know, mapping out every area of your life and in turn this ties into your communities because it's Uranus, your friendships because of the square to Mercury, um, how you communicate over Uh, I mean, just in general, but certainly via social media and via technology and Mercury rules over your comings and goings, your everyday meetings and um, how you think, mentality, the combination of this square from the conjunction in Taurus to Mercury rules over sales and it rules over advertising. So your habits are being tracked and we know this you know I hope none of you write to me saying that this is freaking you out we know Google's listening our phones are listening our devices are listening Facebook's watching you know you say one word all of a sudden you know you've got ads popping up like mushrooms trying to gear you towards um, buying more and more and more so really you know we are just seeing this um this digital mapping of every facet of our life. Now, 
I definitely don't want to present only one reality to you guys. Yes, this may be a reality. It may be in existence right now to a certain extent, but there is a lot in this conjunction that is going for us. And that is our ability to incorporate things like meditation and yoga and just practicing mindfulness in our everyday life. And I'm saying that because of the trine to the moon in Virgo at 12 degrees. The 12th degree in astrology is the Pisces degree, Piscean degree. So this is about um, meditation, mindfulness, intuitively knowing how to heal ourselves because moon in Virgo energy is very attuned to what the body needs and what we as an individual need in order to um, thrive and be in harmony with ourselves. There's also a sextile to Venus in Cancer, which represents our ability to um, maintain close relationships and ties with family and also with Venus in Cancer being very close to the spiritual star um, Sirius. This represents our focus on protecting our spiritual values. Of course, this um, conjunction is also making a sextile to Neptune in Pisces at 25 degrees. So to me, this indicates our ability to maintain a higher vibration for those of you who are interested in doing so. Um, spiritual cleanliness, spiritual purification. Um, and what I mean by that is not allowing yourself to be bogged down by Advertis advertisements being so caught up in the technological world, I would strongly encourage spending as much time um, in nature as possible, walking barefoot on the grass, surrounding yourself um, with plants. This one's real. This one's fake. Um, I name my plants. This is um, this is Selma and Bob. <laughs> anyway. Um, I distracted myself. Yes, so there's there's so many ways that we can maintain our own sense of individual identity. And I think that our individual identity is really um, what has been threatened and what is at risk here because, and, you know, this isn't so much about the conjunction, but essentially um, maybe it is, you know, Taurus is our values, it's our priorities, we shouldn't just be prioritizing, you know, the advancement of technology for advancement's sake. You know, we shouldn't be just stomping out our culture, okay, whether that's your, um, your cultural values, heritage, upbringing, um, traditions as well. Yes, it's okay to implement new traditions, um, but not at the sake of, you know, forgetting your um, your, like the culture of your ancestry and your lineage. And also, you know, this does show a boundarylessness when it comes to pioneering um, or marking out new territories. Okay. So on one hand, Mars can represent um, boundaries, but not when it comes to marking out new territory. And Taurus is um, the natural world. So we do need to protect lands that are sacred, sacred to um, certain cultures, groups, um, indigenous lands as well. So anyway, guys, I think I think I'm going to leave it there. I hope that I've covered everything. And um, thank you so much for joining me in this live session and like I said you can watch this on replay if you want to know how this particular conjunction is going to impact you on a personal level I have completed my July 2022 horoscopes for the 12 individual signs so I'm going to leave a link in the comment section below um, but you can watch your 
ascendant sun and moon sign horoscope to see how how that will impact you on a personal level so enjoy um, this new 15 year cycle for what that indicates for you on a personal level and I will see you guys in my next video